Owl. Yes. A game we've been waiting on finally came out. It did. I bought a new phone for this game. In a language that we can both understand. Yay! <laughs> Which is a benefit. Yes. To the both of us. Yes. And also you went to uh, you went to the movies. I did. To watch not a movie. Not a movie, but to the movies to watch not a movie for three and a half hours. Yeah, you know, normal movie length these days. Mm -hmm. And got to yell a lot during it, which also normal movie. Both non non ironically true. <laughs> <laughs> so, hmm. Hey, don't stand on that book. He's gonna stand on that book. <laughs> There you go. Welcome to this week's episode of the Season Lamb Check Up OPA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Ladium. Hello. This is episode 168. Woof. Next week's going to be nice. Nice. Uh, and today we are talking about some, some Love Live stuff, which I know everyone's going to be like, what? They never talk about Love Live never. ever. Never. Never, ever. Uh,. Squadron Festival All Stars is now out in English. It is. it is. And you went and watched the uh, the delayed screening of Love Life Fest day one. I did. So let's start with that. Love Life Fest. Yeah. Tell me about your experience at the Love Live Fest. Okay. In wow. In a theater. <laughs> Man. So um, I will say I drove like almost an hour um, to go see this. And I did have a friend. I have found someone here who actually is into Love Live. Um, so I didn't have to go by myself. Nice. It's exciting. Um, and I wasn't sure what to expect, really, um, when I got there. Because I was like, all right, I'm going to watch like a concert in a theater with some people. I don't know how many people are going to be here. I don't know what they're going to be doing. I don't know if like we're going to be able to actually like participate in quotation marks. Um, so I, I was a little like, eh, but I was just dedicated to the fact that like I needed to see this. Um, so I did. And um, it was interesting. There were a lot of people there in cosplay, which was fun. Um, mm -hmm. Like there was an entire row of the Nijisaki girls there. And I was really impressed by that. Um, There's a lot of Hanukkah and some Chica. Um, and a lot of the blades, like the the light sticks, there were lots of those. Uh, so anyway, um, after a weird delay because the creepy man was like, all right, your feature film will come up in 30 minutes. And we're like, wait, what? Schedule for seven. <laughs> so um, we had to wait. But um, it starts up and you see like all the all the idle blades in the crowd and the crowd just like going nuts mm -hmm. like absolutely nuts um but everything's black except for like the little like carnival symbol at the top of the stage um and then lights come up we've got aqua and um the new single with hanamaru um Mitekin Horizon, is that how you pronounce it? Mm-hmm. Yay, I did it. Um, <clears throat> so we had the uh, the fun butterfly outfits. Um, and this was the moment that I realized, like, oh, this is probably why they put us in, like, the very back of the theater. Uh, is we all got to participate. It was fun. We were all doing, like, the, the crowd parts. <laughs> um, so that was really, really exciting. And so right off the bat, we get some aqua. And then they're just like, bye, and leave. <laughs> like, we'll see you in, in an hour. Yeah. Um, so then the uh, the Nijisaki girls take over. And they did the Tokimeki Runners. Mm -hmm. um, the intro, official like, theme song of School Idol Festival All-Stars. Yes. Which we will talk about momentarily. Um, and so they had their individual um, stage costumes on um, since... That's all they have, basically, honestly, yeah, it, at this moment. <laughs> if you're unaware about Nijisaki, they are all individual idols. Which um, we'll get into in a little bit. Yes. Um, so their options were either, like, stage costumes, uniforms, or casual. Um, so they did stage and um, performed the song. 
And um, this is like what their second real big performance that they're doing here. Third, I think. Third, okay. Because they did like a smaller live at mm -hmm. first, and then they did their first live recently. Okay. And then this would be like their third big kind of event. Like this is their biggest event they've been on. Biggest event, yeah. Yeah, easily. Um, I was really proud of these girls. Like you could really tell that they were nervous and there's a lot of pressure on them. Mm -hmm. But they did a great job. Um, and you could tell that they were super hyped to be there. Like uh, the girl who plays I literally never stopped smiling the whole time she just had like this giant giant grin on her face and like you could tell she was stoked um so that was really cool and i was again proud of them um i will say that the uh the crowd that i was with was not as kind to them as i would have liked um which was upsetting, but you know, what do you expect from anime fans? At this yeah. Point? Um, but like, considering that this is like their biggest show and they're brand new, like the fact they got up there and like nailed it is really really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, very very proud of them. So and then we got to do like their intros and. But also, like I as a as a side note, like that the first day is the only day they would have been all together as a, as a whole unit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because uh, Kanata's voice actress was booked for something else previously before they did all the Love Live stuff. So oh, she wow. did not show up for, for, for day two. Man, that's got to be nuts. Mm -hmm. um, which I guess makes sense why she performed on day one. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we did their intros and uh, nobody in our theater really knew their intros yet right yeah i mean that's kind of i think to be expected unless you're like you're deeply into that scene yeah and um so you know it, it was interesting uh there were no subtitles so right yeah i think that's kinda... to be expected like i think all of, like the, yeah. the delayed viewings have that so like i didn't expect it um there there were these teenage boys next to me who kept yelling that they don't understand Japanese. I'm just like, what do you think you were getting into coming <laughs> right. up, honestly? Um, and also, like, stop yelling that you don't understand Japanese. Like, I don't care. Like, um, we, we watched the um, the broadcast version of the U.S. shows that Aqua did. Yeah. And they still spoke Japanese in that, which I think is just because, like, th that's their stage, stage shtick. And, like, yeah. they, just, they just go into it. So, like... And they would Wherever throw in some were. English phrases, yeah. but, like, they speak Japanese. They're Japanese people. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't have to cater to you. Yeah, exactly. Um, but also, like, you knew what you were getting into and in watching this. Like, and I guess maybe because, like, we've watched so many of their lives at this point and often without subtitles. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just like, all right, yeah, this is how it is. But, you know, maybe some people don't know that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, continuing on, um, we got their intros. I will say one thing that was interesting is that um, Brina, her voice actress, had the board mm -hmm. during their intros. Um, she doesn't wear it during their dances, obviously, because that would be yeah. dangerous. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, but I thought it was really wild that like they had her put it on for the intros and like it actually works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really cool looking. It's really cool looking. Um, I just don't know where they keep it like <laughs> when she's doing everything else. But um, that was neat. I was really really excited about that. And um, this was also the point where um. Like you notice that they made a few changes to some two of the outfits specifically to make them a little less risque, um, which I was happy for, um, partially because I was like worried about these girls. <laughs> um, you know, idol mom Al out here like, oh no, somebody predict these girls. But um, I think they've they've been like that since the beginning, since they've been doing lives. They have, yeah, yeah. Um, but. It's just something I was going to mention is that eyes has been altered um, so that, like, she doesn't show any stomach and her shorts are quite a bit longer. And um, 
Karen's is like entirely a dress. Like it's a one piece and it has shorts underneath it. Uh, as opposed to being like a corset and a mini skirt. Mm-hmm. Um, and another thing that um, came from these intros is uh, Karen's voice actress, which I don't know her name. Um, I can look that up. Okay, I'll just keep talking while you're looking that up. Um, Karen is, like, specifically designed to be, like, a sexy character. Like, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a model. She plays that up. Like, that's how she is. Mm -hmm. And so when she's doing the, like, call and response intro, you know, she speaks and she's, like, doing the whole Karen thing and she's, like, super duper sexy and has, like, a deeper voice and, like, is really pulling off the sultriness. And then as soon as she starts the part where she's like introducing herself, she's like really high pitched and really high energy. And I'm like, (laughs) what just happened? That is the contrast. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, You know, it kind of felt like how, uh, how the whole Yohane Yoshiko thing is that like sometimes she has like the deep voice and then sometimes she does like really high pitched stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, That was basically Karen's voice actress, but like IRL. It was wild how she just completely changed how she spe- was speaking when she went back to like, "I'm this is me. Hello, this is my name." Uh, Karen's voice actress is Miyu Kubota. Okay. Um. So after we got the call and response intros, um, there were some performances by some of the Nijisaki girls. Um. So we got um, Ayumu is, how do you say her name? Ayumu? 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 Something like that. Something like that. Hers, um, Rina's, Mm -hmm. uh, Kanata's, Kanata's, and and then um, Karen. Yeah. Um, One thing that was really, really cute about um rena's is that while she was performing the other members were in like the school uniforms on the sides of the stage like with (laughs) pom-poms it was really really cute that's good it was really cute um and um (laughs) i was i couldn't stop laughing at one point during um IMU's uh, performance because she was doing a great job. She did an absolute great job. Um, girl can sing really, really well. Um, but th- she goes down like the the middle part where there's always like the big stage and then they had like the like into the crowd part. Uh, so she starts walking down this and you have like all the dudes on that side just going completely nuts. <laughs> But in the middle of that, there's this one guy who is just, like, no facial expression whatsoever, just staring. (laughs) And, like, you see him as she's walking because of the way they've zoomed it. And I'm like, what is he doing? He's just, 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 you know, watching the show. (laughs) He was just, like, completely stone-faced, like, at Love Live. Like, Like, I'm taking this very seriously. He was. It was so funny because, like, one of my favorite things when they were doing, like, the crowd shots is that, you know, sometimes there were people who were just, like, you know, meaty. Like, they're, they're, they've got their blades, they're jumping, whatever. Then there's, like, the mix between, like, the dudes who are just, like, standing there staring or the dudes who are just, like, losing their absolute minds. <laughs> and so, like, usually, you know, faces are blurred when we watch them. Well, I, like, well, I think the, that's because that's the like the the, produ- the production the produ- uh, the produced version the home yeah. video version yeah so like the live versions they just they don't do that because they have to get that out so quickly they can't right but like I've never really noticed this before because mm-hmm. of it being blurred and so like now that I've seen this live version with like these these weird facial expressions and I'm like oh my god this is amazing <laughs> um so the person that I was with, like, every once in a while, we'd be like, look at that guy, look at him! Um, so that was the first time I noticed it was during this first performance. Um, then Rina's performance was stupidly cute. Um, she did an awesome job, and like I said, the the other girls were, like, in the back with pom-poms. Um, Kanata's, she had the bed. Mm-hmm. 
And she plays a sleepy girl very, very well. She does play a sleepy girl very well. Kanata's um, voice actress is may- is maybe the weirdest get that Love Live has gotten. Really? Because, like, normally, like, you know, like, Aqua was all kind of, like, up-and-comers and everything. And a lot of the other Niji girls are up-and-comers. Yeah. She has been, like, in some big stuff recently. Really? Yeah. What has she been in? Uh, She was recently in uh, Demon Slayer, which it got real big last year. Mm-hmm. As like one of the main characters, she has like she's already a solo artist, doing stuff like that. Uh, she was in I, the Somnium Files, the Japanese dub. Really? Who is uh, she? Aiba. Wow. Um, she's in some other shows that are relatively big as well. So like she has done a lot of stuff before like getting into Love Live. Huh. Which is very like weird, given like the usual circumstances for for how they cast for Love Live. Mm-hmm. So, um, her performance was really, really funny because she basically had no choreography whatsoever. Yeah, because like I think like the way her like the way she does that song in the game is just like she just kind of like moves around and then just goes and sits on a bed. <laughs> yeah, and like every once in a while she'll like yawn or put her hands up like she's gonna go to sleep, but there's like mm-hmm. no choreography, so she was just kind of like standing there, like swaying every once in a while. I was like, okay, um. I will easy. say it's very easy compared to everybody else, but um, hers was my least favorite of the the performances by the Nijisaki girls. Um, not to say she did a bad job because she did not, but the other ones were like... It just didn't really have enough good. like flash or anything like that? It's not even flash. It was just like... There wasn't really anything to like be exciting for me there. Well, she's sleepy. Other than like a bed. She's like, sleepy. Are... I'm also sleepy. <laughs> That's how you would perform. You're just like, I'm, I want to go to sleep. <laughs> I do want to go to sleep. Um, The surprising one for me, because I was not expecting it, um, was Karen's. That song's a bop. It's such a bop. And she did amazing. Like... You know, some of the other ones, you could tell they were nervous. They had some shakes to their voices. She was just like, I'm out here. I'm rocking it. Like, this song is my jam. Like, I've got this. And nailed it. Um, The thing, and I mentioned this to you when I got home. The thing that's interesting about this, though, is the way that it was filmed. Mm -hmm. Um, It seemed like they were trying to, like, make it PG. Um when the dance moves for it are very much not PG. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not that she's like, you know, a porn star or anything out there, like dancing on a pole, but you know, she's way more sexy than we've ever gotten in a love live character ever. Um, And so like, there's a lot of like gyration and a lot of like hip thrusts. And um, she does like one of those, like, drop and pop moves at one point like with the slow like rising up with your butt um but the way that they filmed it is that like if she did anything that was like below the waist it was either very very zoomed out or they just had it from like the chest up (laughs) um so it was very very weird how they did that because like why would you choreograph it that way if you're not going to show it right um are they going to show it um, and I was very, very happy that she had shorts on underneath that skirt because, like, Jesus Christ, it was dangerous a few times. Um, I saw those shorts quite a bit, and that's how I know they exist. Uh, but that went from, like, I didn't really know a whole lot about that song to being, like, okay, this is easily one of my favorites because of this performance. She was amazing. Just saying. Um, so then they did their second song, the um Love You, My Friends. Yes. Um, which was on the carts. <laughs> Good. Yep, they got they got the carts. I have a cart song. Oh, there are lots of cart songs. Um, so they, they got their introduction to the carts. Um so they performed that, they did great. Um and then they get to leave. Goodbye. You're done for um, the night. <laughs> well, they come back. Well, I mean, like, performing. Oh, yes, yeah. Well, I mean, they only have, like, 
two group songs and then their individual songs and they're not going to do all nine and mm-hmm. one night and like the, um, the subunit songs hadn't released yet so yeah um have they now mm-hmm. yeah they're out oh, oh i haven't heard them yet i'll have to go listen to them uh so then speaking of subunits we get aqua subunits mm-hmm. uh so we start off with uh Sharon. uh they come out in the uh Kiki Zai day 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 outfits. Mm-hmm. Uh just absolutely slay that stage. Like <laughs> they were energetic. Um it was great. I was real excited. I love that song. Um and then we get um PS no Mukugawa, is that how you would say that? Sure. One of those. Um which had a lot of eye a whole lot of eye um and she she was so cute she was so cute i love her um so while that's happening on the main stage um you have them just like run off they're like okay bye um and then we get more carts because azalea is on the carts um, and so they they start with Galaxy Hide and Seek on the carts and eventually end on the stage. Um, and then did uh, Lonely Tuning. They did the uh, like the pink Galaxy Hide and Seek outfits, mm-hmm. um, which you've said it before, and like every time I see it now, I'm just like, oh god, you're right. But like that one little like. St- moon or star or whatever that they put on Sua's face it's like right by her eye that would make me a crazy person <laughs> um and then we get guilty kiss um it should be mentioned and you had told me this before I even got there so I was ready for it they reuse the remixes from the um subunit battle mm-hmm and the intro cards for them. So, mm-hmm. like, we got Fighting Ruby. Good. And um, it was funny being in this theater with other people because I had seen that with you. Mm-hmm. And so I knew what was coming based on the remixes. And, like, every time there was, like, a new remix and they, like, couldn't figure out initially what it was, it's like, who's coming out? What's happening? <laughs> What is this? And I'm like, oh my god! Um, not not everyone was was ridiculous enough to buy the the uh, the limited edition version of the movie from Japan. So they probably have not seen that. Okay, yeah, fair. But it's great. It is great. Um, One day we'll get those release. Probably when five years from now, when Aqua is done for good being aqua yeah, yeah. And they're like well 10 year anniversary box set here's some new songs and that here's where we put the re- the remixes on god those remixes are so good though um and so like each one is introduced by those remixes and um it was really really funny to me to hear like people try and figure out like what's coming up next um and like the dude next to me just kept yelling out at one point once he realized it was guilty kiss he's like new romantic sailors i'm like dude no like that's not happening calm down they're not going to perform that right now have you noticed that they haven't performed any of the other new ones like not happening gotta save those for the 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 upcoming stuff yeah well azalea got canceled so They'll, they'll get rescheduled i would assume maybe um so Guilty Kiss comes out and start off with like Ultra Bop, like one of the best songs by any subunit of all time. I can't say it, you can. Kawari Yasuki. There we go. Um, that high note, man. Um, legitimately because I am who I am and like, you know, we were already doing all kinds of things in this theater anyway. Like she hit that high note and I did what the fans did in like the first time that they did it live and just like lost my mind. Um, Cause she just like 
destroyed that note and it's probably the best one I've ever heard her do. Um, it was really great. Um, also, Ina Thighs. Uh, heck yeah. Uh, and then we got the Guilty Farewell Party um, track after that, um, which is a fun song. Not as good as the last one, but a fun song, and I liked it. Um, so then they leave. And then we get another remix, which is also probably from the um, the unit carnival thing. Um, and we have Saint Snow, mm -hmm. not in the bad cop outfits, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, they did self control, and um, it was amazing. Then they got to do like their like intros and talking for a bit and. Um, they were so cute. Uh, I had no idea what they're saying like 90% of the time. I understood a few words, but like they were so cute. Uh, like every once in a while, they would just come in. They're just like, Saints know this and do, do their like hand <laughs> motions. Like they did it probably three times. It was really, really funny. I think I saw something that like they came out and like they did their call and response stuff and they're like, Look, we realize not everyone here is going to know our call and response stuff. So just like when we do our stuff, just yell if you don't know it. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. Um, that that seemed to be the case. Um, but it it was great. Uh, and then they did believe again, mm -hmm. um, which no one's shocked by. Um, again, fantastic job. Uh, I told you this earlier. Hinata's hair has gotten so long, so. That was interesting. Uh, so they they did a lot of talking, and then I realized like why they were talking for so long before they did believe again. And then they leave because once they leave, here comes the boat. So we like, gotta stall for the boat. <laughs> I think they were probably just waiting for the boat to get all set up, and them to get in their outfits to get up on there and all that jazz. Waiting for and some like, sort of signal. Yeah, it makes sense because they were talking for a bit. Um, so then, yeah, the big boat makes its return from Fourth, Fourth Life. Life. Mm -hmm. um, but this time, the front of it is adorned with a nine. It's the ninth anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, so we start off with, uh, oh, God, I'm never going to be able to say this. Toro kanai hoshi da to shitemo. Um they're in the Mirai ticket outfits. They performed this, and um, this is when I knew that things were going to eventually be hard for me, because while they're performing it, um, and a little bit during Mirai ticket as well, uh, they kept showing Anju, and she was like tearing up. Mm -hmm. I guess just seeing everybody out there, like she had some tears going on. I'm just like, oh no, oh no, 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 you can't do this to me. Um, but as we know, she is quite good at continuing to sing while crying. Mm -hmm. Um, and was able to like work her way through it and you know, had some some reassurances. But um I feel like it was a combination of that and also like, oh my god, Muse is about to perform in a little bit. Oh my god, Muse is about to perform in a little bit. <laughs> yep, yeah. Um and that definitely comes into play. Um, but she she was definitely tearing up a bit. Um, so it's like, oh, no. I know you're happy, but, like, oh, I sympathy <laughs> cry. Um, so after they finish Mariah Ticket, they come and do their intros and their call and response, which I was so excited to be able to do the call and response because I know theirs. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can do these. <laughs> Um, so I was able to do all of theirs with the with the group, which was fun. Um, so I decided she was gonna gonna hug uh, Anju, which she probably needed it because she was a little, a little weepy. <laughs> um, but you know, it's always a big deal of like, who's she gonna hug this time? And it's usually her, but um, my heart melted a bit because Ina, you know, locked on on me. And now I'm dead. <laughs> you know. Um, we've also discussed that uh, I probably 
lucked out in the sense that like we got day one because day one had a lot of stuff that was like really, really great for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the next song they did was Jumping Heart. I love that song so much. Um, nobody can bring me down on loving it. <laughs> nobody. Not even the awful teenage boys who didn't like it. Um, then we got Aquarium. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're still like in Mirai ticket outfits. Like there's no outfit changes at all in this. And then we get first single. Um, one thing that was interesting on the first single performance is they still had the um, the yo jump. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, how she jumps over. Is it Mari and Kanon? No, I, Mari's one of them. I don't I don't remember. But she does the jump. Um, but during that on the sides, like two others do like a mini jump. And they didn't really do that on this one. So I'm not sure like they pretended to do it, but didn't actually pull it off. They're like, look, so, we're tired. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. It was, it, I mean, like, you know, they've been performing for, like, several minutes straight. So I also probably wouldn't want to do it. But um, I just noticed it. And I was like, oh, okay, interesting. Um, so then Muse came out. Mm-hmm. Which I, I'm very curious to hear your opinions on this. Because you only know Muse really through School Idol Festival. Mm-hmm. And a little bit from what we've seen of Love Live. Mm-hmm. So, and you've probably not seen any of their performances live. Nope. So, you were basically coming into these songs, these live performances of these songs, like just blind as a bat. Yep. Um, And I was a little irritated because like throughout everybody else's performances, like everybody in the crowd just kept, like everybody in the theater kept yelling Muse. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I understand that you want to see Muse, but also like, you should probably respect that these other people are performing too. Um, but you know, whatever. Um, so they come out and, um, I don't know what these outfits are. They're like red outfits, but they're not the like first season intro outfits. So I don't know what they were from. They're one of the single outfits, I think. Okay. Um, so they came out and they did uh, this has Bokra no live Kimi to no life. Mm-hmm. The very first song you play in School Idol Festival. Is it? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, if you if you played it before Aqua was in. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, I don't remember playing that. Uh, I probably have. It is the first played, Muse song you will play. I played through all the Muse stuff, mm-hmm. but I just don't remember it. Um, And so this one, they had all the choreography um they performed um they did awesome they did really really great um and you know i was going in knowing like they haven't performed together in a while like five years yeah so i was really impressed like Mm. how well they still like meshed together and danced and sang and all that i know they did like some uh they've been they've been doing some like muse live streams more recently and i think like they talked about um doing love life fest and they're like yeah we went backstage and it was just like it was like yesterday when we were performing in the tokyo dome oh wow like it was just like everything was just like normal again um so after they did that they did their uh call and response intros Mm -hmm. uh this also was hard for me because like seven out of nine of them were crying i i bet i bet um and so I was just like, oh, because <laughs> um, they like, you know, like, like you said, like, this is the first time they performed since their final love live in the Tokyo Dome, like five years right. ago. Like, yeah. I would imagine the response they got from just that first song they performed would have just like they blew the roof off the place. Yeah, it was huge. So like getting that response after being away for so long would be like, just like, holy crap. <laughs> so um, I think the only ones that I didn't see cry at all um for Hanukkah's voice actress. Um, and, She's a pro. <laughs> and uh, Ren's voice actress. Mm-hmm. They weren't crying. Cats. Probably. <laughs> um, but the other ones all got a bit teary-eyed. Um, the other one who held it together like 95% of the time was Nico's. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't 
I didn't see her cry a whole lot, but she did get a little teary eyed at one point. But the rest of them, like, um, it just immediately broke. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I think it's uh, Haneo's voice actress. I mean, she was like in bad shape crying, mm -hmm. um, and like had to actually like go down to the front of the stage and get like a towel and like wipe her face off because she was crying so much. Um, and that ended up happening a little bit later with um, Katori's voice actress too. But mm -hmm. like she was trying to speak at one point and like you could just see her face like crumble. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> I don't even know you guys and I'm sad. <laughs> um, also, uh, similar situation with King in that I did not expect uh, Nico's voice actress to be so tall. She's so tall. Um, and um, I, I may have told you this. I think I told you this. Um, at one point, the people in front of us were talking about uh, Ellie's voice actress. Mm. And like, you realize she's almost 40? And then someone else is like, oh my God, she's like a mom. And I'm just sitting there like, Oh my god. And I googled it later and she's 35 by the way. Um and I'm like Well, she would have joined Love Live when she was like 25, so. Right, but I'm just like they people think that like anybody in their 30s is a mom. Well, Cuz they're kids. Yeah, it was just bizarre and they're like talking about it, it strange to me. Um you know, it Sometimes you have moments where you're like, oh my god, am I old? And then I was like, no, you guys are just wrong. She's amazing. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Um, so then they did like this giant medley mm -hmm. of uh, Muse songs, but on the carts. So like a bunch of like their more popular stuff, essentially just so they don't have to like do a bunch of songs and perform them back to back to back essentially so well they did perform them back to back to back well i mean like it, like as like you know doing dancing and all that sort of stuff oh yeah yeah, yeah. no they didn't do dances for any of these um, was it were it, they performing the whole songs or was it like a like, cut and trimmed version of songs that like bled into each other i couldn't tell i think it was the whole song i think but as you know, um, the only versions of them that I know are the ones from. Um, yeah, I guess you're. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You would only know the ninety second versions of them. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, eh. but they were all, um, they were all cart songs, mm -hmm. um, and I'm like one, two, three, four, five, six is what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see if I can actually pronounce these. Bokura wa ima no naga de, uh, no brand girl, start dash, which I did know that one. Um, Sorry wa boku tachi. You no would have known the first one. Kiteki? Did I? The first one's the, the first seer, first season OP. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that, but I did know the song. Um, you may know Tobira and mm -hmm. then Kira Kira Sensation, which I do know that one because I've played it a lot in events. Mm -hmm. Um. So once they got off the cart, also you may know Tabera is the song that Rico sings in the second episode. Ah, yes, 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 that one. Um, get off the carts back on the main stage, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, we have another song that we're going to perform for you." <laughs> Which everyone would have known they were going to perform a song because it is their biggest song. And if like you're yep. not performing the song, what are you even doing? <laughs> um, so they had like the dance for everything for Snow Halation mm -hmm. as well. Um, and there was snow coming from the sky. <laughs> um, and so after that, they did like a collective like goodbye type thing. Yeah. Uh, so Mew stayed out in their outfits. Um, Nijisa Niji Gasaki. Yeah, Niji Gasaki. Sorry, my I got tongue tied. Um, <laughs> they came out, and Aqua came out, and Saint Snow came out, mm -hmm. and the rest of them were in like their uniform skirts and their t-shirts for yes. their individual colors, not individual color, but their group. Their group colors, colors yeah. Um. I I was crying hard here because <laughs> um like first uh Hanukkah's voice actress 
like talks to Nijigasaki girls and is like, you know, thank you for coming out. And, um, you know, they talk for a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, again, Ai's voice actress is just like smiling so huge this whole time. <laughs> um, so, so happy for her. She seemed real, real stoked about being there. Uh, then they they were thanking St. Snow for being there. Um, St. Snow was like, yay. Uh, and then they were going to leave and Hinata missed the stairs. Oh, no. And she didn't like fall or anything because um, what happened was she like turned like she was going to go down the stairs, but she went to the right and the stairs were to the left. <laughs> so she had to like turn back and like zoop, uh, to go down the stairs. Uh, then we got to Aqua mm -hmm. and Hanukkah like tells Anju like, Hey, all right, you get to, you get to speak for Aqua. And she just like starts bawling, like straight up crying, cannot speak. Um, like she she gets a few words out and then just loses it and um probably is talking about how much she loves love live i think because... yeah there's like she like she was just like in between crying it's just like i love love live i love everything about this this series and everything so i mean she was like absolutely full on crying and so like Al was also absolutely yeah. full on crying because I can't watch them cry and not cry. <laughs> um, and it was really cute because um, the the girls who were standing next to her were like, you know, trying to make sure she was okay. And once she actually got to the point where she could speak again, she just went like light speed through her spiel. <laughs> I mean, like... She already speaks very, very quickly, mm -hmm. but like once she got in the mode of like I have to get through this, I have to do it. Like she's like, <laughs> and um, I is over there just like, gr like smirking because of this, <laughs> and like they zoomed in on I's face um, while while Anju's just over there just like, <laughs> um, so I think they were all just like you know, oh uh, you know, this is our leader, we love mm -hmm. her to death. <laughs> Um, it was I, I love when they they did a they did an aqua live uh live stream after Love Life Fest and everything and it was Anju uh -huh. um who was it? it was Anju Arisa and Rikiko I think yes and it was just like there's just a whole bit of just like Anju talking about what she did after the during the first day after they performed she was like I went I knew I knew this building. I know there's a place you can go hide and you can like you can see the stage but like you're out of sight you get to hear the audio from like the actual like live crowd audio and everything mm -hmm. like everything that's actually happening and I just sat there and I watched Muse and I was very excited. Yep. Um <laughs> no I, one was going to stop me. <laughs> I remember that and it was really really cute but there I was mean, like things from that live stream of her just being like having like four light sticks to be like ah and she was just so jazzed <laughs> and they just kept taking light sticks away from her yeah uh, i mean you could really tell she was like happy and i think she was mostly okay until hanukkah's voice actress actually said like for her to start speaking it was like hey you, you're the one who gets to say goodbye to everyone yeah, and I think that like when that when she did that, it just like triggered it because she just lost mm -hmm. it, and so um, you know she Aqua leaves. She has her her gals like help her down the stairs, and everything because she's still not really holding it together all that well. Which you 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 can imagine like you know this is probably something she has wanted to do for literally yeah, the past five years, and like yeah. even before then, where like you know she had like the the Muse cosplay and she integrated that into one of the Shaoran costumes. Mm -hmm. like, which i was so glad i have the the costume book and they actually did a close-up of that glove mm -hmm. um because that's not part of um chica's actual costume mm -hmm. and art um so that was that was really really cute but um you know she she's probably one of the biggest love live fans and yeah. um you know i'm really glad that she got to live out that dream of performing with them mm -hmm. Um, like it obviously meant a lot to her. Mm -hmm. Um, so after they leave, um, we are left with Muse, um, and they are still a little sobby too, but not as bad as Anshu was. <laughs> um, which is funny that like, you know, they're up there and they're like, 
you know, a little bit teary eyed at all, but then on just where there's like losing it. Um, I mean, to the point that like, she was like sobbing into mm-hmm. the microphone, they cut the microphone at one point. Which I think, um, like, it, they probably just, they know how much they mean to all of those groups. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so, um, Muse says, like, the final goodbye to everybody. And then, like, they were, like, scooting back. And it was really funny because, like, they weren't in the right position at first. Um, so they had to, like, readjust and then scoot back. And then, like, the, the doors for the stairs shut with them, like, posing. Uh, and that was it. That was the end. It was amazing. I'm so <laughs> glad I went. Like, it was three and a half hours. It was phenomenal. I was like, stupidly tired the next day. Um, and basically, like, 20% functional for work. <laughs> um, but it was worth it. It was so worth going. I'm really glad that I did. Um, I think that's probably the closest I'll ever get to actually seeing them live. Mm-hmm. Um I'm going to say something that is like very on brand for me, but like seeing Ina and Anju like that big on the screen, I was like, God, they are beautiful. (laughs) They're so beautiful. It is unfair how beautiful they are. Um, So yeah, my, my girl crushes definitely came out at that point, but everybody just did such a great job. And, you know, I don't know Muse as well, and I don't know the songs as well. So, like, I couldn't participate in them as much as the rest of them. Well, I couldn't participate in Mujisaki either. But um, it was really fun to get to, like, do the things that I've seen for, like, so long in all the live shows with with Aqua that, like, I I knew what to do when they did the things. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, when, when they do the woo and jumping heart i got to do the woo um i got to do the call and response and you know it it was really really fun to get to participate in that kind of thing um and god help whoever was in the theater next to us they're probably just like what is all that weirdness (laughs) um yeah i didn't get home until like 12 30 yeah it was crazy i feel like the only like criticism i have of like just the way they made this event is that like if you're gonna go all out and make this like all of love live you have to invite uh, you have to invite a rise yeah i'm not sure why they didn't it, it's weird because like i feel like ever since love live ended like the original series they've just been ghosted yeah and i don't know why like there was never any explanation of why they they weren't invited to this why they've kind of just like been they've disappeared they were trending on twitter during live live fest like people were like talking about a rise enough that they were trending on twitter and like some of the members were like hey thanks for talking about us during during this weekend we appreciate it huh so yeah it's 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 a weird thing that i don't completely understand to be honest Um, it is weird um especially since saint snow is there mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's because like Saint Snow ended up becoming like friendly. I don't know. We we haven't gotten it far enough in Love Live for me to know if like A Rise is. But I, I don't think that should matter, regardless of like just for doing I, live shows. I don't either, but I'm saying like I wonder if that's their reasoning. I feel like I, I don't, I don't know. though. I think like Saint Snow got bigger than A Rise did, and I that's think that that's a that's a that's a a correlation. Just I think that Sunshine kind of blew up in a way that love live originally kind of didn't as well mm-hmm. like muse and everything was big but then i think like aqua's has aqua's gotten bigger mm-hmm. in a sense and like they've been able to like kind of pull saint snow up as well with them um so like that could be a factor but also just it's like when you hear about original love live stuff you never hear about a rise anymore yeah so yeah it that is kind of weird um i will agree with you on that um I will say um like I I've mentioned this a few times but like people really need to stop being so hard on the Nijisaki girls. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's really unfair. They're 
just now starting and like they're still nailing it so like and they're going to be in a weird spot coming up because they're not like the the new girls really they're they're not the third generation they are just like the side story essentially yeah that basically they kind of in a way kind of made their own path because Mm of you know they were born out of school idol festival and everything and have kind of blossomed into something else that like they're they're able to get their own anime now which like none of the girls expected yeah. or ever expected really but then also you have this third generation of love life coming soon as well so like they're going to be in such a weird spot coming up so like it's going to be very interesting to see how they navigate those waters it really is and um oh man i was gonna say something else about nijisaki because oh um I guess in general, like, you know, hearing people the whole time yelling for Muse, like, even when everybody else was performing, was really unfair. But also, you have to you have to realize that, like, there are people that are literally just original Love Live fans. Right, and who that's Who only fine. like Muse and never got into Sunshine or anything okay. past that. But I would still say, like... You know, I I haven't gotten into the original Love Live yet. I mean, I've watched it, but I'm not like really into it. But like, I still had a lot of respect for what they were but, doing. But and, here's like, the wasn't thing: rude about here, it. Here is the key thing: you're not. An okay, yeah, fair. I'm not a. That's the difference. It just made me really sad that like so many of these people were getting just like disrespected because they weren't Muse, and it's like. Can't we just, like, appreciate that all of these people are up there and just, like, kicking utter ass and being amazing? No. Because, like, I think Muse did amazing. And I was so impressed that, like, they have not performed together in five years and they just, like, got right back in it. Like, it was nothing. Um, Like, their voices were on point. Their dances were on point. You know, they only did two dances. But, like, you know, they still had to sing for, like, a good while, just straight. Um, like that's impressive and that's really, really cool. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for every single one of the people, like the girls who was on stage, like every single one of them deserves respect for me. This is hard stuff that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like you can have favorites. I have favorites. Like if, if you haven't figured out that I have a favorite by now, like what are you doing? But, um, You know, that doesn't mean that I don't like the other ones and don't, like, I think that they all deserve some kind of respect. AKA, don't just yell Muse the whole time. And, like, yell that people need to get off the stage. That's rude. Well, that was your trip to Love Life Fest. I am cutting this segment short because they went way longer than I was anticipating. Sorry, I got excited about it. It was we really, really fun. We are almost an hour in. It was a fun event. I know, I know. I was just expecting this to be like, this is 20 minutes probably. Yeah, no, it was a really fun event, and I had a lot to say, and I haven't really gotten to talk about it a yeah, lot yet. It's fine. I just, I have a quick turnaround to edit this, so I'm like yep, a yep. little panicky. No, don't get panic. I'm like, oh God, I got a lot to do. Uh, we have to talk about another thing as well. Yep. <laughs> Which might also take a lot of time. Oh, f- I don't know. It might not. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Because um, I, I haven't gotten as far into it, so I don't have a whole lot to say yet. I mean, I... Mm, we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay. Uh, Squad Idol Festival All-Stars is now out in English. Yes, it is. Uh, we talked about this a little bit when the Japanese version came out, and I kind of gave some like brief overviews of the gameplay and everything, uh, and a little bit of like what I... Would, could could discern of the story, but also like that was not at all what I was asserting from the story. Um, so yeah, this is the this is the game where they're really pushing Nijigasaki because the story mm-hmm. is about them. It's all about them, and essentially, I think that's kind of what they're going to use for the anime. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much of it they're. Gonna, I I would assume they're going to use just mostly. They're going to focus on Nijigasaki. Like you're not going to see Aqua or Muse. I would yeah. assume that much, but you never know. You could be. I could be wrong. I mean, um, it wouldn't really make sense that, like, they're all together like they are here. Like, yeah, it's it's a weird, weird they're thing. They're different timelines. Um, so, obviously, the ga- the one thing that kind of, like, sets this game apart from original School Idol Festival is the gameplay is much different. Yes, You know, like we very, talked about in the, the the episode where we talked about the Japanese version. But now you have kind of a understanding of 
how it plays and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so two buttons compared to nine. Yep. A little bit different. You're you have like these weird like little things where you're switching between little subunits in your group that give different abilities or whatnot throughout mm-hmm. there. Um, you can hit anywhere on the screen. You can hit anywhere on the screen, which is very nice. So you don't have to like mm-hmm. cover up the buttons and you can time your sh- time your hits better. Yeah. Um. So you've gotten at least a, a good handful of of songs down now. Like you've played a, a decent amount of it. Yeah. Um. What are your overall kind of opinions about the game so far? It's a lot harder. Yes. Um. Like the beat maps are f- like. The easy. beat maps are not hard. They're not hard. No. Um And you know I've been doing this story and they haven't really gotten very hard at all. Um. I actually had to speed up the like beginner mode because I was like, oh my god, this is like snail pace. Um. Especially because you know I do like expert and master on regular squad of festivals so i'm like oh my god it's so slow um but now that i'm like getting into it and having like such a hard time getting s ranks i'm like geez like these skill trees are massive and like even though i'm having like way over what they're recommending in terms of score and stamina and all that i'm still not getting s ranks and so that's really frustrating and I had a suspicion that I would be frustrated by that, and I mentioned it to you mm-hmm. that I would probably be frustrated by it. It's the thing where you have to realize, like, essentially this is an RPG. It is. So, like, you can't necessarily, like, brute force your way to the the, the, the highest difficulties like you can in Squad Festival. Um right. If you want to get your teams up and leveled, you have to essentially grind. Yeah. So, but, like... It's this game is much harder when you are starting off, essentially. Yes, like where where I'm at hard. in the Japanese version where I'm like rank forty, mm-hmm. um, I have enough materials for days that like if I get if I got a new UR, I could automatically max level it and I could max out the skill tree immediately. Wow. So like that stuff it, like it, it's still, like you're gonna accrue enough stuff, especially if like you decide like, oh I need to focus in on like on, on training and getting these specific items. Like mm-hmm. a month from now you will be relatively fine in terms of items especially once we get to like the events going which they'll just mm-hmm. feed you stuff <laughs> so you'll start being like you'll start like having like so much money and everything that like you're just like you'll be okay with that you'll have enough for the skill trees and everything but like in the beginning it is a lot more difficult than what it is later on down the line and i think i'll feel better like once i have that mm-hmm. um because right now i'm just like i can't do a whole lot with anything because like I lack certain macarons and everything. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, which like, I will say, this is not the original Japanese release. This is not the 1.0 release of that, mm-hmm. which was much harder to Jeez. like level up and stuff. So like, this is the version they basically updated because people were complaining enough. They're like, they're like, okay, yeah, we need to fix this and adjust how you level up and do the skill trees. So like the original skill trees were like you would. You would either get story or idolization first. Mm-hmm. One of those two, and like the other one would be the opposite of that. The third, the final thing you get would be the costume. Ah. And then the the macarons you would need for all those was like a hundred. Oof. Just to even like idolize. So it was like very just overpriced and everything. This has the adjusted rates and everything. It has the adjusted rates for LP and everything to where like the original LPs for songs, if you're playing like mm-hmm. just the normal songs on the story, was like. 15 for easy, 20 for normal, and thir- 25 for hard. And then now it's 10, 12, 15. Yeah. So those have also been adjusted to make it a little bit easier. Um. So yeah, like this is definitely the easier re- like f- initial release, which is a mm-hmm. good thing because like that, that Japanese original release was kind of busted in a way that like it was like, oh boy, this is... Yeah, I probably mm. would have been way more frustrated with that yeah. than I am. Like I'm still frustrated, but I... I- I'm surviving. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, like um, I said, like it's it's very much harder when you're starting off because you need stuff immediately and yeah. you're not getting stuff immediately because you're playing the lower difficulties and those don't give out as much inf- like of uh, items and stuff as the higher difficulties do. Right. And especially as well because like if you're playing story songs, those don't give out as much items as if you're playing just the regular uh, live show songs. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of just like, oh, I want to get through the story and everything, but then like I'm running into these gates of difficulty and everything to where like oh i'm not getting through the song or whatnot but i need all these items so i'd keep playing and then da, 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 da. it's like uh it's overwhelming but like like i said eventually it's going to get to the point where like, you're just gonna be like 
Oh man, I gotta level this up. <laughs> Done. <laughs> well, Done. I hope that I get to that point eventually because you you one thousand percent will. It has it has been a little bit frustrating, mm -hmm. and there's so many moving parts to this game that I'm like a little overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm not used to that either, that I'm just like, oh, God, there's like 10,000 things I have to do whenever I sign in. Okay, so what is what are the things that are overwhelming you that you think? So, like, training wasn't explained well to me at all, so, so I had to kind of, like, figure yeah. that out. So training essentially is, like, you focus in on specific items that you want. So, like, if you were low on money, you could go, like, all right, I need all all training is I'm going for silver coins. And then you just pump that out and you're getting silver coins. Or you need macarons. All macarons. We're pumping out macarons. We're doing that. So it's it's basically a thing of like, what items do I need currently? What's the thing that I can help that can help me level up stuff that I have now or later on down the line? And that's what you're doing. Like you're not and, and also you're also getting um uh skills for your for your characters that are in your your nine group. So like that's mm -hmm. also a big benefit. Um which also I don't know if the game explains this to you or not, but uh do you know the tier system for skills? Nope. So they're all color coded essentially. Um, grays are just like very like kind of baseline, like they're the the bottom of the barrel. Then you have bronze, silver, which is like a lightish gray. Uh, there's gold, and then there's like these rainbow colors essentially, which that's like the highest of the the skill rank. And then they all all of the skills are like very different from each other. So basically, it's just like you know picking and choosing like which ones do you think would most benefit your team, and also like if you like get a different tier like usually you'll probably go for like the highest tier you can get and then eventually in the skill tree you will unlock um the ability to add in more skills to your character so like it has like a a like a thing where you can uh, you can get up to three but you have to unlock that through the skill tree and then those are basically a little bit down the line where you'd have to like get dupes of the, of the same character to unlock the further parts of the skill tree essentially mm -hmm. does that make sense <laughs> ish it's it's like training is probably kind of like the simplest aspect of this game. Okay, yeah, they just didn't really explain mm -hmm. it very well, um, so I was confused yeah. by that. And then like, and then, and then you have to like think where it's like you have three, you get three times a day or three times per twelve hours. And then yeah. there is also if you want to keep doing it, there are uh, items that you can kind of just like repump that up. So like, if you wanted to go grind out some like silver coins, you probably have enough uh, uh, AP tickets to do that for like. 15 times hmm. so did not know that there you go what else would you think is overwhelming um also overwhelming in my opinion um is that there's like it took me a while to figure out like where the heck the dailies were because mm -hmm. i was going through like the episode like section where it's like here's the character and then like here are the songs that they're featured. And I'm like, what does that mean? And why is it highlighted? And what do I do? And then it's, it's, it's like, just a thing that shows like, hey, these this character's in the song. It literally that's all it means. Yeah. Yeah. It but that's not explained very well. And like Yeah, some, totally. Some of my characters, like I unlock their costumes and I put them in it, but then they don't show up in that. I'm like, okay, well, what do I do to make that happen? Then like I haven't done anything with accessory and it keeps showing accessory stuff. And, Accessories are really simple so well, i don't i don't have them unlocked yet you should have them unlocked really you're far enough along in the story to have it unlocked you probably just haven't gotten any yet oh okay so you'll get them from playing songs that's essentially the thing um and then you put them on your characters when you're in a group they will buff up their stats and everything uh accessories also have levels so you'll level up your accessory they also have tiers as well so like you'll have like kind of like normal ones and then like gold and then like you know you are one so basically it's like you have rares srs and then urs of accessories and then you level those up and then you'll stick them on your character they'll buff up that character and you'll be good to go very simple it's easy they also have like specific skills that you can level up as well but like that requires more accessories or it's like you have like break down accessories to get items for that and all that stuff that's a little bit more advanced which you'll probably learn about later down the line or if you get to it later you can just ask me but yeah accessories are very simple it's just like you have to get them and by getting them you mostly i think you get them by playing live shows not story songs okay and so like that's the thing though is that like there's so many things here but they're just not explained at all yeah i think that is a that is an issue with the game is that there is a ton of moving parts yeah and like i i 
have a bunch of like skip tickets. Yes. And I don't, I don't know what those are. Skip tickets I, are again very simple. If you were like, man, I gotta do my dailies. I got like this one says I need to play five live songs. I gotta go to the. I don't want to play five live songs in a row. I don't have time for it. You click a song. You get your uh, your guest partner. You get to the the screen where it's like, oh, I'm about to play the song. Click that skip ticket. Bump it up to five skip tickets. You hit you hit the play song button. You've just played that song five times in a row. So skip tickets are essentially, hey, I don't want to play this song. Skip it for me, but I want to get the benefits for playing the song. Why is none of that explained? It might be better. I don't know. Did they really explain it in the tutorial section that you went through? No. Okay. Well, because it... I actually watched like all the tutorial mm. videos and went through every single one of the sections because I was like, "There's a lot going on here." I got to well, see. Sure that's why you happening. have me here because I have played the Japanese version and I know all this. <laughs> it's just wild that like mm -hmm. they don't explain this stuff. I'm like, and I initially thought that like School Idol Festival when I first played it had a lot of moving parts. And then this like, is this way one, more. Like, I was like, nope, never mind. Way this more. one has way way more. But um, again, I think like once like we get a month from now. All of this stuff will be trivial for you. You'll be like, yeah, I know how to do this. 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 Yeah, I mean, I'll just have to stick with it. Mm -hmm. it um, I just... Yeah, it's just the repetition to it. frustrated with it initially. And it's, it is a lot. It is very overwhelming and a lot to take in at first. Mm -hmm. I also wish that you could, like, specify which group you want to pull from. Yeah, that is a bummer. Like, there, there's nothing like that currently. It's just... It'll be like here is a paid tier. Yep. Here is the the regular tier, which right now is just like one. And then once we get further along, there'll be like a here is the new cards, and then there'll also be a tier. Where, Here's the old cards, <laughs> and that'll be it. Um. So yeah, like I I feel like the uh, the scouting could be better. They could do a little bit more with that, but again, it is what it is. But uh, yeah. Um, I have um, three Muse URs, and I'm like, I would really like to have an Aqua one, please. Thank you. I have you. two Aqua URs. Really? Mm -hmm. I Who'd have Yo and get? Rico. Wow. Because that Rico one I did not have in Japanese. The Yo one I got was the first one I got in Japanese uh, All Stars as well. And I was like, Amazing. wow. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Um, this does have the benefit as well to where you can link with your SIFI, SIF ID to yes. pull in stuff from School Idol Festival. So if you, you know, you've done a bunch of stuff in that game, it'll give you just a bunch of stuff off the bat. And then also, what, the stuff you're doing in All Stars Vice benefits versa, yeah. benefits you in uh in original School Idol Festival, which is a, a very cool thing that they they do. Um, that is cool. I yeah. agree. Is there anything else weird that um is befuddling you? I, I don't know. Um, I can't get the exclamation point to go away on the shop, but I don't know. I don't. I I don't think that's a problem I've had in Japanese school and All Stars as well. So I think it's just there. Okay. You. I think you'd have um, to go through like each each individual pack probably to to get it off. So I'm just like I don't care. Oh God! See, exclamation points make me crazy. Um, and I I I completely agree because it made me crazy at first too. But then I, like I just realized, hey, I can't get rid of this. I'm just going to ignore it. Yeah. So. Um, I I poke Ruby a lot. Yes, because that's a good that's a good way to give you bond points. Yeah, well, I mean, you can only do it like what five times. You can do it five times, but like that's a that's a free five times. Yep. Um, and I feel bad because like if you keep poking her at one point, she like yells out like, "I'm not fat. Stop pinching me!" And I'm like, oh, "No, that's really sad. I wish they didn't include that." It makes me feel bad about, like, poking her. I don't want to poke her if it's going to make her feel fat. So that leads into um, the character levels, which are, yeah. like, the the universal character levels, which essentially are how you bond with that character, how you unlock their, their specific uh, side stories and all that sort of stuff. And you level that up by getting more cards of them. So this is, like, when you get a new card of a ruby... That'll mm -hmm. unlock. That'll level up that universal level. So, like, say, like, she starts at fifteen. You get a new ruby card. She'll go up to like seventeen, and that's how high you can bond level with her. Hmm. See, I didn't know that either. There you go. See, I am a wealth of knowledge. And I'm here to help. I just wish it was explained better. Um, yeah. 
I've also noticed that like if I were to play all of these things voiced, like it would take up so much space. That's why you you just do it anyways. Like every single Don't thing. Don't be a coward. <laughs> every single thing is going to take up so much space because exactly. you have to download every single exactly. individual thing. And it's like, hey, you want this thing to be like five megabytes? I'm like, holy crap. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, So I don't know if you can like download it and then eventually like purge some of that stuff or how I don't, I don't know i don't know I, I don't want my phone to just be like well 100 gigs late. of all stars too late um the one thing they have not introduced yet is events which i'm assuming they will very soon um mm -hmm. the first event you'll get a ur hanukkah um okay. which i don't know I if they will one. if they will adjust the rates on that because when they originally did this first event in Japanese uh, All Stars, if you placed in the first like two hundred thousand, you mm -hmm. got that you are. Then eventually, for every event after that, has been the first fifty thousand. Hmm. So I wonder if that's going to be adjusted or not for this. But I don't know like how the player player base is going to differ from the worldwide to to Japanese and everything. But events, uh, the the base events that they they do, they have like a, a secondary event, but that's not going to come till much later on. So mm -hmm. I really won't get into that right now. But uh, the events are basically just like, hey, play songs. Easy peasy. And you'll unlock stories. Um, you'll unlock the specific characters that are in like the, the event space. So like, there will be pull specific characters for that event that you have to spend uh, stars on. But then there will also be just characters you get from the event itself. So like you'll get two SRs and then the UR if you you know get enough points in that. Um, the difference, I think, really from just like, this and just playing songs normally is that you'll also get uh specific items and these will come in from your like your daily quests and all that sort of stuff where mm -hmm. you play them like they'll be in the bar right next to the skip tickets essentially and if you like have those activated they'll give you a point boost for the event mm -hmm. and then if you also use specific event cards those will give you a point boost for that event so like the srs will give you like a two percent boost or like a point two percent boost or something like that and then the ur will give you like a, a higher percent boost it's so like it's like it kind of incentivizes you to be like, hey, include these event cards in your team. So you, if you want to score higher in the event, you know, you'll you'll get that that benefit from that. And also, it's, a, it's an easy way to get URs. They're not the they're not as good as like poll URs. They're kind of mm -hmm. like the the equivalent of like event URs in SIF. But you know, when you're starting off and you need URs, yep, it's pretty beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> so. There is um, that. And then essentially um they will do two events and then that will unlock the next chapter of the story. Like the main overall story. And how then, many do we have unlocked at the moment? Uh I think you get seven to begin with. Okay. So there's two Niji, two Aqua, two Muse, and then one with everyone. And then going forward it's kinda like it's a mix of everyone and then the Niji Saki girls are having some some stuff happen, which I won't spoil it for you or anything, but stuff happens. <laughs> exactly. I gotta chill. Sorry. <laughs> um. So, do you know why my characters don't show up in the outfits that I put them in? Have you selected those outfits in your group formation? How do you do that? Well, let's let's do a live demonstration for you. <laughs> I will bump through this. I will also mute it so you don't hear music. Or I'll put it up on a tiny bit. Um, so essentially, it can sometimes do that where like you put a put a character in there, and then it'll be like, well, that's not the the uh, the outfit I want. So from the home screen, you'll click on School mm -hmm. Idols, go to Show Formation. So are are you talking about on the uh, when they when you're doing a live show or when they show up on the main screen? Live show, because I'm okay. only going to have Ruby ever on the live. Okay. Uh, Which you can change screen. her outfit on that as well. Well, she only has two outfits right now. Okay, well, I'm just saying that is a thing you can do. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're at your show formation, there is a button underneath each character, and it says change. That is where I you, see that now. Where you switch out the uh, the outfits. Okay, I see. Um, and I think if you do auto formation, it will pop them in with the outfit of that card if you have it unlocked already. So mm -hmm. that might also be a thing if you like if you pop that card in and you don't have that outfit unlocked and you out, you unlock it later, it's not gonna automatically switch that on. Oh, okay. So you would have to go in and manually do that. Okay. So there you go. 
complicated. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit. Like I said, there's a lot of moving parts in this video game. Yep. Like there was, there was literally a thing I learned in this game from the English version that I did not know was a thing. What's that? Uh, if you go to your profile page, mm -hmm. there is a button at the bottom that says guess. Okay. And that is a thing where you can specify specific characters for each individual uh, color type. Yes, I have been doing that. So, like, for your friends, you can send out specific characters for each different color type whenever they get a specific song for that. That is a thing I never knew existed in Japanese Idol Stars. <laughs> I learned that from just the English, and I was like, oh, that's a thing. Hmm. Yeah, I've been trying to, that's like... very useful. <laughs> ...give them the best card that I have in that color, but, mm -hmm. like, sometimes it's just better for them to get, like, a UR that I have from yeah. another color. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also a lot of colors this time. There is, there's six colors. So many colors. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeedy. Um, titles are a thing. Basically kind of the same, but you have to earn them through like playing the game. I don't think I've gotten any yet. Yeah, that you were not going to get any for a while. Like um, A lot of them are like, use this character as your center for X amount of songs. Yep, I um, saw that. Play a song X amount of times. I think like 50 times is when you unlock the, the song title. Jeez. And then I think there's also ones for like play, do like, so here's one. Um, clear 100 live shows with a show formation comprised only of Aqua. You I have, would like to do that. But you have I one for like, to. you know, from Yuzu and Ijigasaki as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also ones for clear 100 live shows with a show formation comprised of only of specific subunits. I've got to also figure out, um, like, how the lineup works in terms of, like, making sure that characters do their proper lines whenever we're doing songs. That's, you're not going to be able to do that. Not yet. The only way you would be able to do that is if you literally go into and do it through the movie version of it. Like, you're not going to be able to line up characters like that if you're trying really? to play it the best. If you're trying to play the song in your best formation, mm -hmm. don't ever bother with that. It's never going to work unless you get lucky. It's really upsetting. But like, I mean, the, the game gives you the option to do that. Like if you like, oh, I want to see Aqua perform Jumping Heart. Like mm. you literally just go to the live show screen and then you click video and you can watch it, which is that's the best way to do it. And it also gives you like, do you want to use your, your team you have now? Or like there's literally a button that says, hey, click the original. Got it. Gives you the Aqua lineup specifically for that song. Gives you the option for, like, which stage you want. So, if, like, you want the, the normal, the, the medium, or, like, the actual special stage that you made for this, you can do that. You can switch to automatic costumes, which I think, like, would if you had all the jumping heart costumes, it would file in for all the jumping heart costumes there and fill that in for everyone. Or you can kind of, like, pick and choose and make whatever costume sets you want for that. And then you just hit play and you just watch and enjoy. Hmm. Well, we've talked, I think, a lot about mechanics. We should probably mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the story. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about it yet. How far are you into the story? I'm still at the um, festival thing that Aqua's trying to put on. So are you in chapter three or four? Uh, give me a second and I will tell you. Four. Okay, so you're almost done with Aqua then. 42% through yeah. with that. I am in chapter five, which is the beginning of the Muse stuff. Spoilers. Mm -hmm. But oh. obviously, kind of knew what I was going to think. I let's let's discuss. Going. So, like, I think the key things that come out of this is the Nijigasaki stuff. Yes, because that is I the agree, main yeah. attraction to this game. It is their game, like we've said. Yep. And you know, this is the first time you kind of get to see the the genesis of the Nijigasaki Idol Club and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. How these characters kind of come to be and everything. And probably the biggest surprise coming out of this game, which is something I was not aware of, kind of because I've kind of kept in the dark of like the story stuff. Yeah. Just so I could, when I finally get the English version, I'd be like, oh, this is what's actually happening. Your character is the leader of this group. Yep. What? Yep. What? Yep. <laughs> yep. Didn't realize that was going to happen. No, neither did I. Which I think that's the the most fascinating aspect of this. And like going into like the anime, that's going to be very fascinating of like, a character that is not a school idol is the leader of this group technically. Mm -hmm. And like writes the lyrics and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but wild. Mm -hmm. 
and a character that like we haven't seen in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, a face for the anime, right? Do what? They have a face for the anime, but they don't have it in, in the game. Correct. I don't think they've shown the the that character in the game. I I don't f- believe so. And probably because they're trying to be like, this is you. You yeah, are exactly. the leader. Like they literally, when they introduce that character for the anime, they're like, this is Anata, mm. which is like Japanese for I. So. Um. So yeah, you're the leader, and you're mm-hmm. trying to put the club back together. Mm-hmm. Because, spoiler alert, the club is not together at the moment. There's one member of the club. <laughs> yep. And she's like, no, the racing club, or the horse club can't take this room. And I'm like, the horse well, club. Me, the, ex- the camping club. Oh, sorry, camping club. One of the clubs. And you're like, she's I like, just wanted to talk about idols. Yep, and she's like, no. I'm going to go talk to the school council president. And then she's like, "Hey, you want to get you gotta get ten members if you want your club to come back." They're like, what? What do you mean? You just need five, and you're like, "No, nope." You will get ten and like it. <laughs> so yeah, so you meet Kasumi first. She is the only like remaining member of the Squad of Club because stuff happened in their original incarnation where they all kind of yep. went their separate ways, and you show up and are like, "Hey, I like idols. What, what about idols?" And she's like, "What?" Camping club, get out of here! <laughs> and all that. Uh, then you meet the, the student council president, president, and she's like, "Yeah, get ten members, you can get your club back." And this starts your recruitment campaign to get yes. everyone back together into the club. Yay! Um, um. So the easy one is like, "Hey, you've been childhood friends with um the the main lady with Aimu, Ay- so." Yeah. Which I was like, she's going to be the the group leader eventually, right? And then she's like, nah, she just kind of shows up and just joins. And she's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I like I like idols. Thanks. I thought she'd be the leader too because like she's the leader when they perform. Mm-hmm. She's the main girl that they put out for like if they're doing like, oh, we need all the leaders. She's the yeah. one that shows up. Yep. But and I guess like, like if you were doing this in like. On the front screen as that too. Yeah. If you're doing this as a game where like the actual main character is the uh, the. The leader, the player character is the leader. You can't really have someone represent as the character currently, so. Yeah. Not until the anime comes out, at least, so. Um, You also get uh, Shizuku back, who was once a member. She's just, like, been doing uh, theater stuff, and is like, yeah, I thought this would be a way to kind of help me. Okay, cool. (laughs) I'll do that. Um... Emma comes back from like Switzerland. That's the f- <laughs> that was the funniest part. She's like, "Hey guys, I'm back. How's the club going?" And everyone's like, "We thought you left." And she's like, "No, I just went to Switzerland. I left a note." And then Kasumi's like, "I thought that was from a rival group. I can't believe it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, was like, really good. What? What? What's going on? <laughs> she was so confused. Uh, they get caught onto the back, who was also a former member, and she's like, "All right, I'll I'll sleep here now." Yep. She's still very sleepy. So sleepy, which same. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they recruit I, who, and it's well, just like, because Ayumu's like, I've seen this girl before. She she looks like she could light up a room. She would probably be a good idol. And they're like, they go after her, and she's like, what? No. <laughs> Get out of here. Yep. Uh, so can we talk about the fact that, like, I did not expect to like I as much as Pun I do? master I. <laughs> Pun master, like. Oh man. And looking at this lineup, I was like, eh, you know, not really into her. Her character design. design does not match what her character is. No, no. And so, like, when she started like talking and we like hung out with her a bit, I'm like, you, I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> and so, like, I love I. I mm-hmm. think she's so great. She's really good. Uh, she helps you recruit. Yeah, she helps you recruit Rena, who is a like socially awkward girl who uses boards to communicate her emotions and everything. And I was like, I know this girl. She would be great. I helped her make these boards. And <laughs> they're like, All right, cool. You get to join now as well. And Rena's like, Rena, John board. Yay. Yay. <laughs> um, eventually, like the last person you kind of recruit is Karen, because they're like, uh-huh. she's a model. She could be very good at this. Karen's just like, oh. Can I be sexy? 
are you gonna be sexy? And like, yeah. And she's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, you have to try and find Setsna, who was like the the main girl of the former club. Uh, she was like the the experienced idol and everything. But like, no one's seen her since. No one's seen her at live shows or anything since. And everyone's like, where is school. where did she go? And then it's like the student council president like runs in and is like, hey, good job, guys. You got the 10 members. Yay. And, and they're, they're like, wait, what? No, we, we didn't. Have nine. We haven't got the 10 yet. And he's like, ha ha. Surprise. It's me, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, she takes off her glasses and undoes her hair. Oh, my God. Setsuda. How did we no one figure this out? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Amazing. And she's like, oh, I just wanted to see if you were going to take this seriously now and. And if we could all just, we could do this again. All right, cool. We're going to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Um, so then they are like, you know what? We're just going to be individual idols mm-hmm. as a club and do our own performances. Mm-hmm. And they make you the chief, mm-hmm. which is like, okay. And you're like, all right, yeah, I guess. Um, and your goal is to get to the school idol festival. Yes. Get on the main stage so you can perform with Muse and Aqua. Yeah, because um, the main character that you play as sees a performance with the two of them together and mm-hmm. is like, holy crap, they're amazing. Yeah. Um, so that kind of like sets off the second chapter where it's like you're going through some performances and everything and kind of getting everyone ready, but you're still trying to figure out like how the group dynamic works and everything, how to make these 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 girls you know be good idols and everything like that. Uh, your first performance, like two of them get like eighth place and you're like that's good but we could do better what if we do a group song and they're like all right cool and like you're doing this like group performance and practicing and then like over time you realize like oh this is more just like i'm just kind of forcing them into doing what i want not what they're good at yeah this is not good Uh oh yeah. <laughs> so your your player character kind of like has a freaking freak out freak, freak out moment there mm-hmm. I, I can speak um, and it's like, never mind, guys. I am doing the wrong thing. And they're like, what? <laughs> Did you think we were doing a bad job? Oh no! But eventually, like all that kind of group pr- pr- practice and everything helps them with their individual performances as well. They go to like another competition and are able to to win, depending on which character you use. You can just, like pick whatever. Yeah, um, you text whoever it is, mm-hmm. and then like that person is the one who wins. Mm-hmm. That gives you the slot into Squidal Festival. Yep. Which is interesting that they get a slot in the Squidal Festival by one of them winning. Yeah. I was like, okay. Uh, that leads you into like into just the the story going in a completely different direction. Yep. Where you decide like, all right, I got to figure out a way for to help these girls. I'm going to Numazu. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna find Aqua and meet them. <laughs> Figure out what makes them special. Yeah. Um, they do a good, like, kind of callback to the first episode of Sunshine where, like, you find Rico on the beach and she's just, like, kind of, like, looking out the ocean. You're like, oh, my God, don't go kill yourself. <laughs> she's, and like, she's like, what? What? What, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> also, it's, like, it's weird because, like, the original series, you don't see them, like, interacting with fans that often. And, like, as soon as you show up, you're like, oh, my God, I'm a huge fan. And they're always like, okay, cool. You want to meet everyone else? <laughs> yeah. It's like, is that really the response you would have? <laughs> Chica's just like, hey, you want to stay at my place? <laughs> <laughs> Which is a very Chica thing to do. Yes. <laughs> the best part is like, you find, you meet uh, the third and first years, the, like the next day, and Marty's like, would you love to stay at the O'Hara Inn? And Chica's like, <laughs> I've already got her as a customer. <laughs> that was super funny. She's like, maybe next time, Mari. <laughs> So you get to like shadow Aqua around as they're pre- or they're prepping for a summer festival in Numazu and everything, and kind of get to see like how they work and everything, how they practice, how they come together, and like their their group dynamics and everything, their their practices and everything, how they come up with songs and composing and all that sort of stuff, just like the whole gambit, and also like their training and all that sort of stuff. So you get kind of like a a a good just like focused in on like what makes them Aqua, but also trying to figure out like. What makes them one of the biggest groups, biggest school idol groups, mm-hmm. which again kind of comes into this weird notion of like where the timeline of this game, because they are obviously are still in all in school, right? 
Urbana Hoshi is not closed down. Right. But they're still at the top where they're able to perform with Muse, who are like also concurrently a group while this is all happening at the same time. In school, when this is definitely not what. Yeah, is, it's weird. It, timeline shenanigans. Timeline shenanigans. It's timeline like, presents. It's very strange. But yeah. Um, but still, I think like the Aqua story is really good. Like it wraps up in a really fun way. They do an interesting thing with the the player character. That's a another callback to Sunshine that I think works really well. Like inadvertently, like the character does it inadvertently without like kind of like knowing what they're doing, and everyone else picks up on. It and is like, oh yes, hmm, mm hmm, <laughs> which have, is really have fun. I, have I seen this yet? Uh, what was the last thing you saw? Uh, they canceled the festival. And then they put up the dolls to try and make it not rain. I'm trying to think. It's either, it's literally that scene or the very next scene. Hmm. Does the player character ask Chica something in that story? Ask Chica something. She changes the lyrics of things. So maybe the next scene specifically where that happens. Okay. I can't remember which one, but yeah. So all that happens and like it wraps up in a really fun way. Hmm. Okay. Um, and then the next chapter is you going to going to Muse. So you go to Otonoki Zaka and all that sort of stuff. But you you meet up with the Niji girls beforehand. Then you're like, you're like, oh, I gotta go to find Muse, <laughs> Moose, Moose, Moose. And then, like, you'll spend the next two chapters with them, and then you'll come back and come back to Niji for the final chapter, which will be the School Idol Festival. And then there will be more story to come. Bum. So, yeah. We're getting through the story-ish. We are. Um. So that's All Stars kind of in a nutshell. Yep. Overwhelming at first, I guess, would be the key thing that to take away from this. Very overwhelming. But I think... You know, once you kind of, like, you just get acclimated to it, this is basically for everyone, like, once you get acclimated to it, you've got enough reps into it, you've done it a few times, played it enough, you'll be like, oh, I know how to do this, I know how to do this. It's just, it's those growing pains of when you're first starting out, you're like, oh, God, this has so many systems. What does all these systems mean? How do I understand them? What are, what is, what's this do? What's that do? What are, what are all these things do? But sooner or later, you'll just be like, yeah, that's that's what that does. That's what this does. That's what they do. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Mm-hmm. Too easy. You know, a team full of URs. Yeah, I only have three at the moment. I have two. Standing up there on your mountain of URs, why don't you? I'm not a mountain. I have three, and the rest of them are SRs brag about it i'm not bragging <laughs> i'm frustrated because i still can't s rate things i mean i wouldn't focus on s ranking stuff right now i would focus on hey can i pass the song good that's that's a that's a good thing to do yay because like you can go back and just re s rank those songs later on yeah like it's not that big of a deal It gets to be a big deal when you have a full team of URs and then you still can't S rank songs. Oh, that would be frustrating. That is frustrating. Let me tell you about it. Uh... So yeah, that is a kind of a an overview of School Idol Festival All Stars, the English release of it. Worth mentioning, there are models that like do the dances and some of the songs. Yeah, so, like, well, it's, we, it's we, very three D. Like that, it is three D. Yeah, that is so. a thing. Uh, well, some of the songs, some of them are still like the daily yeah. songs are two D. Yeah. Um, and then there, there's some some newer songs that will come in will also be 2D. So that's a big difference. Yes, which is cool. Yes, I agree. So there you go. The end. No, the game's still gonna keep going. Yeah, fair. It's not the end yet. Um, that's gonna wrap this episode up, I believe. Yeah, I'll, I will say that I'm wearing my ruby socks right now, and I'm really happy about that. Gumba ruby. Gumba ruby. Gumba ruby. No!
So if you'd like more from us, go to SeasonLamacheCheckup.com or SEC.cools where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Season Lamacheckup Checkup and Jared and Al Watch. You also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to Anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. And a new piece up. Where where can people find your new piece? Uh, I have a link to it on my website at Anladium.com. Well, there you go. Go there and find this new piece of owls. I wrote about Catherine, full body. It's pretty good. The, the piece, not the game. Yeah. <laughs> Clarify. <laughs> uh, you can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash anime checkup. That's where we do the tweeters. Uh, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash SACOVA. Buy us a slice of pizza. Yay. Get, us, get access to unedited podcasts. Get them early. Get bonus episodes and everything. All that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, also, mm-hmm. I put out a game this week. You did, and it was really fun. This is a game we played uh, for Patreon. The first first part of our Jared and Al play games. Mm-hmm. Um, which you can listen to that episode for free currently. Get a taste of what you uh, get. a taste of get. what you can get. All that sort of stuff. Uh, I put out a game called Save and Shine. It is a single player or cooperative one shot campaign, kind of D and D esque. Use mm-hmm. dice. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about being school idols. <laughs> yep. Um, it is taking a group and leading them to nationals, and seeing the trials and tribulations they go through along the way as they try and figure out a way to save their school, find a way to come together as a group, fend off rivals, and try to win nationals. All in two seasons. And the like hour and a half we played, I fell in love with Mosaic mm-hmm. and I want them to be real. Just saying. It's very good. Uh, yeah, so it, it, it takes about like an hour and a half, I think, to play. Just depends on how long your choices are. Um, that's also going to depend like if you're playing it by yourself or playing with other people. Because mm-hmm. you're going to like be able to talk talk out issues and Thanks. all that sort of stuff with, with other people and all that sort of stuff. Um, you can get it now because it's out now at, I got to remember the URL. There we go. Go to ragbag.itch.io slash save dash and dash shine. Or just search save and shine on itch.io. That'll take you to the page. And you can download save and shine and play yourself. It's fun. I can I can attest to its quality. If you uh if you play it and everything, let us know how things go for you. Yeah. Let us know your outcomes and everything because there are different outcomes for every game, essentially. Have we posted our play sheet yet? It's on the Patreon page for the episode, okay. so it, that is available. So if you want to, like, if you listen to the episode and you want to check out the decisions we made and, like, everything else that kind of we went through and all that sort of stuff, we have a play sheet that we kind of wrote down everything as we were going along. That is up on that on that Patreon page as well. So, yeah. It's fun. I enjoyed making it. I enjoyed playing it with Al. I enjoyed playing it. So check it out if you get the chance. Let us know how your game goes and everything. And uh, give feedback and all that sort of stuff if you like. Mm-hmm. Thumbs up. Save and Shine. It's on itch.io. Check it out. And and Catherine Full Body Piece. Yay. And Catherine Full Body Piece at anladium.com, which mm-hmm. will take you to another link. <laughs> yeah, it's First Person Scholar. For where to go for that. There you go. We so, produce things. We do perf- <laughs> We do produce things. <laughs> Next week, uh, we will probably do what we did today, or we were going to do today. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about Al watched Erased and read Erased. And, and read. And I'll try to remember what happened in that show, because I haven't seen it in like five years. <laughs> nice. So look forward to that next week. Goodbye.